Welcome to What No One Knows, the podcast that tells the secret behind the published books. Hosted by Lisa Marie Garcia, the Chief Operating Officer of Now Publishing, a full-service book publishing and author PR firm. Through the years in the publishing industry, we've heard the statement over and over, this is what no one knows, when we interview would-be authors wishing to tell their story. This is what this podcast is all about. And now to our podcast and our host, Lisa Marie Garcia. Hello, this is Lisa Marie Garcia with Now Publishing, and thank you so much for joining us on our weekly podcast, What No One Knows. I'm very excited about this podcast. We're going to be talking with an author, published author, Polly Bowen. It, her book is called It Is About You. So we just love that title, and the is 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 big and bold. So it is about you, 10 ways to be stronger and happier. She also has a offering for young adults. So we'll talk about that a little bit uh, into the podcast. But uh, welcome, Polly. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, we're excited to talk with you today and have our listeners get to get to know about you. Um, you're definitely a person that uh, we can't sum up within a couple sentences because you've had uh, many careers and you are uh, many things and, and much more than just the writer of the book. It is about you and author of the book. It is about you. Could you share with our listeners some of the different careers uh, that you have and, and have right now and had in the past and how multi-talented you are? Well, um, so in the past, I have, um, I've actually been a magician's assistant and a dental assistant and a model, which I still do some currently. So I did some leg modeling. I was a ballerina for about eight years, eight to 10 years. And currently I work for an insurance company. I work for State Farm. I've had my insurance license since 1997. Um, and I also have my own radio show. And I'm an artist, so I've, yeah, I guess I've got a lot going on, don't I? I mean, oh my gosh, how fun though. I always love it when you share about the magician's assistant, um, magician slash dental um, assistant. I love that <laughs> as if that's the job, but yes, what I love, thank you for sharing all of that. And, and particularly or specifically, I should say, what our team here at Now Publishing um, saw when we first met you were your gorgeous artwork. Um, and they were, um, well, we actually saw a lot of different types of um, subjects, but the majority were, were these mermaids. And, um, and so that's very much on your brand as we've, as we've gotten to know you and that, can you tell us just kind of go way back, you know, how did you start to love mermaids? What do you love about them? Just kind of share a little bit about that. And I'll actually, then we'll talk about what your offering is for the young adults uh, coming up. Well, actually, you know, I was raised in Kansas and so mermaids were especially fascinating because I knew I wasn't going to see one there in any lake nearby. And, um, <laughs> So when I was a child, I loved um, Hans Christian Andersen, of course, Little Mermaid, uh, the original. And yes. so, and of course, and there was a ballet, a beautiful ballet performed by the Copenhagen, uh, you know, the Royal Ballet in Denmark there. Um, so that was one of my favorite movies of all time. And it just carried forward. I always, always loved them. Even that silly chicken of the sea mermaid on the tuna commercials. I don't know. It, it's always been a thing. I've always wanted to be one. And um, so when I got to Florida, it was, you know, more appropriate here to really embrace that and do some artwork uh, around mermaids. And I thought that would be something relatable because there's such a culture here. There's, you know, I also make mermaid uh, swimsuits. Uh, swimsuit tops and there's so many people that relate to that and little girls especially love it and I don't know so many of us adults would rather just swim away and be a mermaid I think <laughs> absolutely <laughs> or at least you know th think of what the mermaid issues are in this world and say I'll take those versus what our issues are in this world right exactly but, yeah it's like a lighter load I, I love it. Well, I think it's it's definitely part of who you are as a businesswoman. I think you're very creative. After reading your book, it is about you. You, you have a very creative approach to, you know, the advice that you give. Um, one of my one of the most fun chapters I, I read in your book that's now available at it is about you book .com, by the way, um, is you say uh, you have a chat. What is it? Chapter eight 
where you say, stay a fish amongst the sharks. Yes. Now, make no mistakes. This is a business book. I mean, you have this, you know, whimsical fancy and this artistic and creative way of looking at it. But it is very much a book of, of you know, of empowerment and of inspiration to business people. Can you talk a little bit about that chapter just in general? You know, what are you saying when you say stay a fish amongst the sharks? I love that. Well, I've experienced a lot of sharks in the business world, meaning they're they're predatory, they're not nice, and they will sacrifice a customer just for the sake of being spiteful to a coworker. And so I've been on the receiving end of that, and it's so painful. And you know, the thing is, that behavior should not be accepted. And one thing I touch on in the book is, Society is a tad bit backwards in a way because I'm equating sharks with bullies a little bit, you know, too, because um, for some reason, bullies are more accepted in the adult world. I haven't have not figured out why, but the rest of us are told to just deal with it or, you know, don't be sensitive. And I'm not oversensitive about that. I mean, I'm in sales, too. So. I can handle rejection. It's not about that or being a wuss. It's that bullying behavior is not acceptable. You know, you can't go around treating people badly. And so, you know, there's, I guess, and the main thing about that is you don't want to turn into one. You want to maintain your own character and not resort to those kind of tactics in retaliation. There's ways to deal with it. So, you know, that's my point. Yes. Well, and you even say, you know, in that same chapter, you know, you say it's also easy to fall into the predictable patterns around you. And, you know, it, uh, you know, I was talking with some of the other, someone the other day and they were saying, you know, again, the indecision is a decision that you're making, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. You know, the easy things, they're easy. And that's why, you know, most people do the easy things because it takes effort, you know, it takes, um, you know, a very, uh, you know, a very, you know, pivoted, pointed where you say, nope, I'm not going to, you know, continue to act this way just because everyone else is, or I'm not going to not speak up because, you know, I'd be the only one speaking up the more difficult, you know, road. So um, I love that. And, uh, you know, you're just saying, you know, stay who you are. So stay that fish, whatever you are, if you're a clown fish, if you're a, you know, whatever kind of fish you are, if you're, you know, a, a red yellow, tail. Made, yellow tail, yeah, any of that. So that's awesome. Um, let me ask you, because we have this quite a bit come up, um, with folks that, you know, want to write a book and they just are having an issue taking that first step over the threshold to do it. And if I remember, you came to our team in December. Is that yes. right? Okay. Yeah. Because it was Christmas time and everyone's thinking about the parties. None of us knew what 2020 was going to be, you yeah. know, we're just having a great, a great old time. You know, what was it that, you know, made you say, no, this is the time I'm going to do it and write your book, start to write. Well, I had actually uh, started back in the summer because I had, you know, self-published one little children's book. And then I started this uh, Mermaid Logic book. And then my dear friend Suki wanted to join along when I saw her, showed her my illustrations. And she said, well, I'm a graphic artist. I want to, I want to help. And so uh, before I knew it, I was emailing her my illustrations and she was adding all these wonderful things. And came up with ideas. So we had worked for actually really hard on it for four months, five months prior together. She and I had worked on this uh, Mermaid Logic uh, project. And then uh, by happenstance, I went to an RGA meeting uh, out of my busy schedule. I just popped into this meeting. I met somebody that day who knew of you guys and she hooked us up. And the next thing I know, I'm meeting you in December, the Wednesday before Christmas. And it's all, you know, it all came together. So that was incredible, actually. 
It, it was pretty amazing when we met with you. And I'm glad you brought that up. I wanted to talk about just for a moment here. Um, so not only are you the published author that's now available on on um, on presale called it, it is about you book.com, but you're the published author of a second offering called Mermaid Logic. And you just mentioned it briefly. And it's very unique for our publishing house to have put together a workbook guide that first of all has your beautiful artwork in it. It's just which is just it's just astounding. Um, and, and I know for you, it's just your you know, you think that they just come out. Uh, you know, everybody, they don't, so to speak. I mean, I, I am like, not, I'm a stick. I can make a stick man. That's my artist <laughs> ability there. But even more than that, they're just so colorful and lively. And what's beautiful about the artwork in this book is they all have a specific message and it's, you know, just a few words or an impactful sentence. And then what you've done is you've, you've written to that young adult, that young uh, female that's, you know, in high school, in uh, the years of college, in their undergrad years, and you're speaking to that, even those middle schoolers, uh, to give them these empowerment messages, honestly, mm -hmm. and to make them think about, you know, asking them questions that make them dig deep, um, you know, into their world and some self-discovery comes out and, and all of that. So tell us, uh, share a little bit about um, where your, how your heart is about that, you know, why you feel, why did you feel like something like that would just, would, would be significant and important? And it is. Um, because a lot of times we forget just basic principles in the rat race of life, you know, um, and especially, you know, referencing the shark, the shark quote, is that, how do I say it? It's insidious, you know, a lot of times when we start changing who we are, we don't even realize it. So we have to have the conviction to stay true to our character. And I feel like little reminders, little pick-me-ups will, um, I don't know, you girls will find relatable because I think one of them is you don't want to ride all the waves. <laughs> so, right. you know, that's that means stick to your character. And if you don't have to take everything, you don't have to settle, I guess, is a lot of that. Um, and some days you have to make your own sunshine. And that's one my mom always used to say to me. And it's so true because sometimes the days are so gray and you just have to do your best to be sunshine for other people and make your own. And I feel like there's so many different quotes that are relatable on different days. I just thought that it, it might really inspire some some young girls. It absolutely will. And you reminded me of another chapter in your book that's such a fun one where you do talk about, you know, sometimes you have to make your own sunshine. Um, just again, just just it's just a very um positive and, you know, very it's positive and down to earth kind of business advice that it is about you it, it, as, is how I could describe it since I've happened to to read the book. Um, you did bring up, I was going to bring her up, but you brought her up yourself and that's your mom because in this business book, you do talk about the mentorship that she gave you and the influencer that she was in your life. Um, can you maybe share a story? Um, I know I'm putting you on the spot here. Can you share a story uh, with with our listeners of, of something that she, you know, how she mentored you and, and got you to start thinking a little differently than maybe you were at the time. Um, yes. Um, the book. Thanks. Yeah, she started uh, really early with me. I was um, in Campfire Girls, which is like Girl Scouts, but it's a different organization. And we had um, to sell candy. And um, this is just one of many. She did not do it for me. Let's put it that way. A lot of parents will take their, you know, kids sheet to the office. Well, for one, my mom worked at home and stay at home mom, but she didn't call her friends. She didn't tell people to order from me. She had me do it. So I would go to the neighbor's house or, you know, she'd drive me, um, or I'd take the sheet to church and I would ask people. So she made me do it myself. And I love her for that. And there's a couple other instances in it. One of them's in the book about the readathon. And yeah, no, she didn't do it for me. And I love that because she made me independent for one in a lot of ways and motivated me and more of a go-getter than, than if she just did it for me, if that makes sense. 
No, absolutely. And I, you know, I'm glad you reminded me of that, honestly, because so I have a, a freshman to be in a sophomore, what do they call enterprising freshman and enterprising sophomore, which means they're going to school in two weeks and that's what they'll be, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll tell you, my freshman is constantly getting, um, having me do something that she doesn't want to do. Just for instance, she, you know, if I say, you know, go to the, I, you know, step out to the eyeglasses place and see how late they're open, which is just, you know, what kind of, that's nothing, right? That's nothing that involves, you know, talking to someone behind a desk and asking them a question. Um, you know, she'll, no mom, no, I, I'm embarrassed. And, and, you know, so, 